This video focuses on a beam analysis problem recently posted by a student. He wanted to know how to fashion a solution for finding the support reactions for this beam. Since this problem could be of interest to others, I would like to present the essence of that discussion here and to show the steps for analyzing the beam. We wish to analyze a beam that is fixed at both ends and has a variable moment of inertia. The beam is subjected to a concentrated load and a concentrated moment, as shown here. If the beam had a constant moment of inertia, we would have been able to easily solve the problem using the table of fixed end moments found in most structural analysis textbooks. Such a table has entries like these, in which the fixed end moments are given parametrically, in terms of the position and magnitude of the applied load. To use these table entries for our beam, we can set A to L over 3, and set B to 2L over 3. Then the fixed end moments become. By superimposing these two diagrams, we get the fixed end moments for the combined loads. We can then determine the remaining reaction forces using the static equilibrium equations. Here, however, the fixed end moment table is not applicable since our beam does not have a constant moment of inertia. To determine the support reactions, therefore, we actually need to analyze the beam. In previous lectures, we introduced several analysis techniques for indeterminate beams. One such technique is the force method. In using this method, we identify and remove a sufficient number of redundant forces in order to make the beam statically determinate. We then formulate a set of displacement compatibility equations which can be solved for the unknown redundant forces. Another technique for beam analysis is the slope deflection method. This technique involves calculating the fixed end moments when the member is subjected to loads. But in this case, since the fixed end moments are not readily available to us, we can divide the beam into two segments so that neither segment is directly subjected to any loads. That is, the loads act on the joint that connects the two members instead of acting on a member. This way, the fixed end moments for each member become zero, making the slope deflection method a viable option for solving the problem. The moment distribution method, the three moment equation, and the matrix displacement method can also be used to solve the problem. Although given its numerical nature, the moment distribution method is not a good fit in this case. Regardless, since these three techniques are variations of the slope deflection method, I'm going to use it here to analyze the beam. The beam is fixed at both ends. Therefore, its elastic curve has a zero slope at points A and B. Let's assume that the beam is going to have a downward displacement at joint C. We label the amount of displacement as D. And we denote the slope of the elastic curve at C as theta c. Now we isolate the beam's segments, as shown here. And we draw the member end moments and the member end shear forces. We can then write the slope deflection equations for each beam segment. For segment AC, we get... For segment CB, we can write... As you can see, since neither beam segment is subjected to any loads, the fixed end moment terms in these equations have vanished. Here, delta is the relative vertical displacement of the segment caused by its counterclockwise rotation. For segment AC, since the rotation is clockwise, delta equals negative d. For segment BC, the rotation is counterclockwise. Therefore, delta is equal to positive d. Hence, we can rewrite the slope deflection equations as. Let's simplify these equations further by substituting zero for theta a and theta b. Also, note that we can express the member end shear forces in terms of the end moments using the static equilibrium equations. For example, using a free body diagram for segment AC, VCA can be written as. And using this free body diagram, 
VCB becomes. Now consider joint C. Since it needs to be in the state of equilibrium, the sum of the bending moments acting at the joint must be zero. Also, the joint's vertical forces must add up to zero. Using the equations for VCA and VCB that we wrote previously, we can rewrite the second equilibrium equation in terms of the member end moments like this. If we substitute the slope deflection equations in these equations, we get the equilibrium equations in terms of two unknowns, d and theta c. Solving these equations for the unknowns, we get Substituting theta c and d back into the slope deflection equations, we can determine the member end moments in terms of the load magnitude, m and p. Also, since we already have vca and vcb in terms of the member end moments, we can easily determine the shear forces in terms of m and p. Knowing that vac equals vca, and VBC equals VCB, we can write. At this point, determining the support reactions becomes a matter of transferring the member end forces from segments AC and CB to the supports at A and B. That is, the shear force at the left support equals VAC, and the bending moment is MAC. At the right support, the shear force equals VBC, and the bending moment equals MBC. Here are the reaction forces drawn on the beam. This concludes our problem-solving session. If you have questions similar to the problem we just solved, and you would like to have it discussed and solved in a video, please send us a note.